it becomes gambling if you don't study. It becomes gambling if you don't take the time to uh, learn. People always think kasi that investing in the stock market is lagay ka pera, you become rich. It's not get rich quick. Eh? Because if it was that easy, then everyone would be a billionaire. It's something also that you take a lot of time to do. Like for example, you, you're an expert in yoga. Parang ganun. Uh, I can watch all of your videos, but it doesn't make me an expert. It doesn't make me good at it. Ganun din sa Ganun din sa stock market. People can watch all of my videos, but they still have to learn and experience it to be, become good at it as well. Okay guys, we're in for a special treat because uh, this is the first time in this YouTube channel, in my entire in the entire history of the YouTube channel, that we will have a grade school classmate of mine to be part of the vlog. We've never had that. That was interesting, but because my last name is Germo, her last name is Fernandez. She is a seatmate ko up until grade grade six. She is matalino. Ako hindi ako sobrang matalino nun. But we're gonna but we're gonna switch the gears for this video. She's gonna ask me though. She has a lot of questions uh, for me in this video. So I'd like to introduce Rika Hernandez. She's an entrepreneur. She, her family owns a publishing house that they created the bills no, for the peso bills that we see here. They're the ones who printed it. I, I want, I'm interested about that. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that also in a bit. But she's a mom and she wants to learn more about investing in the market. So. Rika Hernandez, welcome to the vlog. First time, may classmate ako sa vlog. Na sobrang yaman. Oh my gosh, that's why I'm on the show because I need to know the secrets of paano ba yung maman. At saka itong pa, ano to ha? Siya yung matalino. <laughs> I remember, uh, si Marvin, everybody would ask him for, ano, help me with my assignment. Yan yung katabi ko. <laughs> no, no, no. So nga, let's, can, can we ano, test your knowledge? What's the square root of three? Uh, uh, nine. <laughs> Square root of three. Okay, okay. Patay. Bag, madam, sa mga nag-unsubscribe because of that answer, I do apologize. Anyway, <laughs> anyways, okay. Bef before your questions, what do you, what what does your company do? Kaya nagprint ng bills. So yes, uh, our company worked with Banco Central to design the banknotes of the Philippines, mm. and it was uh, very. It was a very fun and interesting project because you know you it's not every day that you get. Um, accounts and projects like that where okay you design the money galing so everything that you see right now it's all them oh. so madaming galit sa inyo every time na 13th saka 14th of the month kasi wala nang wala nang money yung wallet nila but that's what we're trying to do here to help people uh, have more money at the time na 15 and 13 okay let's do this what's your question I have zero knowledge of the stocks and I'm already at an age where I feel like I think it's about time I make my money work for me. So my question would be um, how much would I need to have in my bank account for for my money to work for me? Um, is that even a right question? Mm, okay, please remember this. In terms of personal finance, it's more personal than just finance. So it has to go back to where you are in your financial journey. Meaning, uh, it's not just about how much money do you have in your bank account, are you in debt? How much money is coming in? Do you have other investments? So if you're in debt, even if you have money in your bank account, pay off that debt first, do not invest yet. That's one. Number two, if you have money in your bank account, you have to also check how much do you spend on a monthly basis, especially right now that we are there's a crisis, people don't know how long this will last. If, if your cash flow is threatened and you think that you may lose income or your your sources of income may be lower in the next few months, my suggestion is you store up that cash first. So for example, for example, you spend 50,000 pesos per month and then nasa banko mo lang 100,000. That gives you a two-month buffer if things go bad. If you are not comfortable that the two-month buffer is enough. Maybe you might not, even if there's an opportunity to invest, work now. What I'll do is I'll increase that cash buffer first until I'm comfortable. So the only time you start investing is cash flow is still coming in, 
uh, that's our faith. And then the cash that you have is a comfortable buffer that no matter what happens, you have the peace of mind. Tapos, anything in excess of that, that's what you invest. So that could be a million pesos, that could be 10 million pesos, that could be 100 million pesos. It doesn't matter. It has to be an amount that when you invest it, tanggap mo na na kahit mag zero yun or mawala siya lahat. Uh, it's an excess that you're willing to part with. So it's not about the amount, it's what you can tolerate, it's what you have in your cash flow. And it's also what are you investing for? Meaning, are you investing that money for retirement? Are you investing that money for because your kids will go to college? Are you investing that because you want to you want it to grow a bit, then after three years you will start a business and do that for capital. So the goals of where you are putting the money is more important than just the investment itself. So you have to figure out what what are you investing for before putting in money to any investment. Tama nga, kasi if you're gonna start any journey, and I like that you mentioned it's a financial journey, um, you start anything and everything uh, with an intention, right? And you have to be clear in defining your intention so that you understand, you know, what direction you're even going to go through. So. Um, like for instance, I am in the field of uh, wellness and I know that there are eight pillars of wellness. Financial wellness is, is one. So just like your physical health and your emotional health, your social health, your uh, occupational health, financial health, literacy or um, knowledge is something that we all have to think about. Ako, when I, whenever I think about money, finances, whatever, parang it's a very, no offense to anybody, it's for me, it's a boring like topic. It's like I don't have the inspiration to really think about it with enthusiasm the way I think about my health and wellness. That's a really good answer about um, knowing where to start and where to put it. So I guess my follow-up question would be, okay, so let's say I am in a position where um, I don't have debt and what I want to do is just have Maybe not so far like retirement. Uh, what is in between now and retirement? There's a couple of things I'd like to mention first. Uh, number one, what's your definition of retirement? Okay, I have a place to live, and I'm I'm just living comfortably enough to uh, you know have my pool, all, all my bills done. It, it doesn't mean that I want like a mansion or anything. At least you 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 got it right in terms of I don't know in terms of the money part of it. Because if you malina ibang tao, they always think about retirement as 60 years old, 65 years old. That's not retirement. That's you're just old already, and uh, the government yeah. is telling you you can't work anymore because and your pension will start to kick in. That's why everyone thinks that retirement is 60, 65. But retirement is not a function of age. Retirement is a function of like what you said. Uh, you have assets, you have savings that can take care of your expenses. It goes back to the first topic that we. We were discussing a while ago. You need to know your numbers. You need to know magkano ba talaga gastos ko per month. Because you said that I need to have this much money to take care of my food, to take care of my allowance, to take care of this and that. Yung this and that na yun, may number dapat yun. Magkano ba talaga? Magkano ba talaga yun? So you you need to work backwards first of how much money you actually need because that that's what's gonna help you to compute magkano kailangan for retirement. Sige, give me a snapshot. What's a comfortable amount for you per month na bu- na buhay ka na? Do I have to factor in the inflation stuff? Hindi naman, hindi naman. Like, just, just, an, if... just ano lang, just uh, current prices na lang. Para simple lang. Diba? If we do a lot of math, baka, sa, you said it already, madaming may ayaw ng, <laughs> ng finances sa YouTube. If we add more of that pa, baka hindi sila madod. But it's true also, no, just to segue, uh, you, will, you will see it already in YouTube eh, that finance... It's not something that people like to talk about a lot. The Filipinos in general want to be entertained more than educated. And and sayang because uh, there's nothing wrong with watching TikTok videos. There's nothing wrong uh, with watching Netflix. But entertaining yourself does not make you rich. Uh, so if yeah. people, people have a lot of ambitions to make money. People have a lot of ambitions to get rich. But what they do on a day-to-day basis does, does not match their ambition. So if you have big ambitions, you have to match that also with your with your action. You can't say that you want to have 100 million pesos but uh, do nothing about it in your spare time. And I keep saying this to a lot of people that if you're employed right now, your job 
will make you sick, financially secure, but it won't make you rich. What you do in your spare time after your job is what's going to make you uh, rich as well. The more you learn, the more you earn. Hmm. What's an amount? So, I don't know. Uh, let's just say 150. Okay, 150,000 pesos a month times 12. That's 1.8 million pesos. So you have to figure out what sources of income can you get to give you 1.8 million pesos a year. Ganun lang, ganun lang so you, you work your way backwards. Mas is simple pen. For example, we, we'll talk about this in the next video, but you have an Airbnb. So for example, example lang, it's giving you say uh, 50,000 pesos a month. So ililess mo na yun. Kasi if it's giving you 50,000 pesos a month, tapos, at let's assume na sana bayad na yung loan mo and it's purely giving you 50,000, you're left with 100,000 na lang. 100,000 a month times 12. So, 1.2 na lang yung kailangan ng uh, salvage ng, ng money on a, on a monthly basis. So, something on a yearly basis. So, you look at your sources of income and how much of that sources of income contribute per year. And then, doon sa kinocontribute niya per year, is it enough already to take care of what you need? So, kung gusto mong fast track yun, you have so much options here. Number one, you put your in money in an, an aggressive investment that will give you a higher rate of return so you get the one point Basis. Second option is if hindi talaga aabot pa you, you, you don't get the 1.8 million or you don't get the 150,000 pesos per month yet. That means hindi ka pa pwede retire You need to find other sources of income first. You need to work harder first. You need to have to delay your retirement. Or number three, pababaan mo yung goal mo. Instead of 150,000, 120 na lang. When That's, do you know na parang oh, I can slow down on the, all the extra little business things and I can now make my money work for me. Yeah, that's an already that's an assumption that your that your money working hard for you is giving you the 1.8 million. For example, you know someone who's spending 10,000 pesos a month. 10,000 pesos a month is 120,000 pesos a year. So that means okay. that that person buhay na siya, makakuha lang siya ng 120,000 pesos a year for the rest of his or her life, buhay na siya. That's, that's, that's what it is essentially. So that means if that person has 10 million pesos and he, that 10 million pesos, he places it in a time deposit that gives him 1.2% uh, return, he will get 120,000 pesos per year. So 10 million pesos placed in time deposits giving him 1.2% percent for the rest of his life tatanggap siya ng 120,000. Eh 120,000 ang kailangan niya para mabuhay. So that 120,000 he doesn't need to work anymore. So ganun lang yun. The larger the amount that you need, the larger also you get. Kailangan ko lagay. So for him, it's 10 million pesos at time deposit is Oh wow. So I, I need more than 10 million pesos. Oh, you, you need more than 10 million pesos. <laughs> hindi, hindi, pero hindi, hindi, lang, hindi lang yun na you need more than 10 million na. I just gave you an example of time deposits because it's it's simpler. Pero pag tinasal mo yung interest rate, say five percent, seven percent, you ten million naman yung bababa also because you're taking in more risk. So that's the rule of thumb in investing. If you want to take in more risk, the amount that you put in will be lower. You're more you're more risk averse. You need to put in more money, but you're taking less risk. So ganon naman siya, di ba? Pag tinasal mo yung interest rate naman. I, math, math na naman. Sa mga nag-unsubscribe because of math, I, I apologize. But, uh, pag tumahas yung interest rate, you put lesser amount of money. We're not all the same, eh. There will be people who will be aggressive. There will be people who will be conservative. So, the ones that are more aggressive, they don't have to put larger amounts because they can take in more risk. There, there are people who are more conservative that they cannot take the volatility. For example, uh, because of the lockdown, the stock market was very volatile. Yung mga lahat ng pera nila nasa time deposits, for sure, hindi sila natapot, hindi sila kinabahan. They didn't experience thinking about ano gagawin sa investments ko. Because their money is in time deposits. So, if you're a type of person that cannot take the volatility, it's okay, you can still invest, but you have to put in more and you have to take in less risk. So, it really is um, a gamble. Gambling is, lagay ka pera, pahala na, kumita, kumita, pag hindi kumita, di hindi kumita, that's gambling. But investing is you really study it also. Eh? What are the investments that will work for me? What's the one with this type of risk? To rephrase your question, gambling is different from taking risk. Those are two different things. Because eh? lahat naman ng bagay uh, may risk. And I always give this example: pag tumawit ka ng kalsada, may risk. However, as an investor, your goal is not to be scared of the risk. 
your goal is to understand what the risks are and your goal also as type of understanding the risk is to find ways of how you manage it. So how do you manage the risk of data within a calzada? Uh, you look left before you cross the you look right again, or you, you you walk in a pedestrian lane. Even if you're in a pedestrian lane, you look you wait for the green light before before you cross and you look left, you look right. Or if there's an underpass, may overpass, you pass there. So may risks, but as a, but what you can do is you're not supposed to be scared of the risk, but you find ways on how you can manage it. Ah, that's a really, I know, huh? Like I've never heard anybody explain it that way. Because, um, I know people that talk about stocks. Na parang, basta it's, kempre you, you you they they use the term risk and gamble in the same line. Mm. Also, no? kind of confusing. Because, parang if it's a gamble, I don't want to risk something that's fifty fifty. Or I mean, is there a science to it? I'm sure that there's a science to it because why are people getting rich off the stock market and invest? I mean, so for me, it's like, how do I start if I don't know anything, diba? So, what, like, what are the questions I need to ask? Like, who do I approach? Like, do I approach? Obviously, I will approach you from now on, but like, do I go to the bank? Are they gonna rob? They, are they gonna make interest of me? Or is it better to talk to? Like, who do I talk to? I'll put the link below for everyone watching, but, uh, for you to be able to invest, you need a platform, you need an online platform, you need a brokerage for you to be able to invest. So, I'll, I'll put the link below. Uh, for Philippine markets, meaning you want to buy Philippine stocks, and for US markets, you want to buy US stocks. So, that's the that's an tip. App. That's app, website. So, it can be an app, it can be a website, it can be a website. But I'll put the link below. You, you guys can click it if you want to see it. That's that's That gives you access. Pero, yung pinag-aaralan kasi sa stock market, that since those are platforms, those are apps. Para lang siya Facebook eh. Once you learn how what to press already, the next few days you're okay already. What takes time in in studying is you need to know what stock to buy, when to buy, how many stocks do you buy, when do you sell it? If you have cash, do you add some more or you don't buy any more? Uh, for example, you want to buy a banking stock. Ano bibili ko banking stock? Ang daming banks. What do I buy? BDO, Metro Bank, Security Bank, Union Bank. PI, uh, AUB, East West Bank, with all of the banks out there, do I buy all of them or do I just buy two or do I buy the best one from my analysis or do I skip banking altogether and I just buy property? I buy, I, ano, Ayala Corp, ba, Ayala Land, ba, Mega World, ba, Vista Land, ba, etc. That's what, that's something that takes time, that's something that people have to learn. It becomes gambling if you don't study, it becomes gambling if you don't take the time to uh, learn. People always think kasi that investing in the stock market is lagay ka pera, you become rich. It's not get rich quickly eh? because if it was that easy, then everyone would be a billionaire. It's something also that you take a lot of time to do. Like for example, you, you're an expert in yoga. Parang ganun. Uh, I can watch all of your videos, but it doesn't make me an expert. It doesn't make me good at it. Ganun din, sa, ganun din sa stock market. People can watch all of my videos, but they still have to learn and experience it to be, become good at it as well. So now that you're explaining it to me, I'm like, okay, so there really is a method, a structure, and a lot of knowledge that needs to be, to be not just taken in, like through the ears, through learning, but you also have to take action and apply and practice, diba? So, um, does it also require some kind of like gut feel or intuition na parang I, I think I should invest here or is it down to a science na parang you gotta read the, re the reports, the Google, it, it, is it purely research based or do you, can you also trust your gut at some times? That's the best way to lose money if you try to buy and sell based on emotions. So I, I really take the time to study. but. I'll give you an example. So, for sure, for those who've been watching the videos, baka nagsasawa na kayo lagi ko itong sinasabi. There are a lot of things that uh, you can see in the economy or at least in what's happening that could be clues already for you on what stock to buy. So, for example, everyone right now is at home, everyone is on their phones, and everyone is on Facebook or in YouTube. So, what does that mean? Facebook is making a lot of money from the ads from Instagram and Facebook because of that. So, yun, do, do, those are clues already that I can. It might, be, it might be an interesting facet for me that because Facebook is making a lot of money, I'll just invest in Facebook stock. Again, okay. don't just buy it just because of that, but th those are ways for you to narrow down what you can 
look at uh, at the end of the day when you invest in the stock market you are buying businesses you are buying companies which companies you think will be profitable when you buy them today but not just profitable today will they be profitable two three four five six seven years from now so for example if you will sell your company to me yung uh, the printing the publishing house you're gonna sell it to me ako I'm, I must analyze it in a way that if I invest in their publishing house may kliente pa ba sila gano ka kalaki ba yung utang nila how much cash do they have in the bank what are they what are their assets there's a lot of questions that uh, people need to ask also if they want to invest so those are just some of them and all of the information of companies that you want to invest in it, it should be transparent di ba so you be able to see all of those yeah since since it's in the stock market everything should be uh, disclosed so from their earnings their debt what uh, what shares the does the founder have everything everything should be in either the PSE if you're looking at Philippine markets or uh, whatever stock exchange that you are investing on outside the Philippines nakalista rin dapat din doon for whatever company that you are investing so if you like Apple shares you want Google shares they they should have an investor relations department that show you that which all of those information but i hope that people stay no padaming mat tong video na to no so for those that are staying comment below if you are staying minsan la tayo nagkaroon ng sobrang yaman na classmates sa vlog na to si uh, Rika sa YouTube channel i'll put it in the link below unang-una niyo panoorin na video Dumaan siya na Singapore papuntang Thailand para lang mag business class para lang matulog sa Singapore na mga lounges. Get <laughs> evidence na guys, sobrang yaman. Yeah. Thank you for answering all my beginner level questions. I actually learned a lot in, in this one. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, Regard na this again. She has a YouTube channel link in the description. But guys, please stay tuned. Second video, she is a super host in Airbnb. So we're going to talk about Airbnb. We're going to talk about what's happening in Airbnb. If you have a condo also that you're having it rented out, uh, we're going to grill her with all of those with all of those questions. So stay tuned for the next uh, video and then she's going to be back. So to everyone watching, thank you, Rika Hernandez. Thank you. And I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. And God bless you.